Good morning. It's the Monday after Septuagesima, Monday, February the 1st, and uh, it's time for morning prayer at St. John's Church, according to the 1928 prayer book. We begin on page 6. Our sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest." Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Since we're in the season of Septuagesima, we'll be reading Psalm 95 out of the Psalter uh, with those additional verses about listening to God's voice, uh, hearing it both with trust and in the obedience of faith. Our psalms are psalms for the first day of the month at morning prayer, beginning on page 345, Psalms 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There's something very special about the first three of these psalms because they're kind of an introduction to the whole, the whole Psalter, the whole collection of psalms. Psalm 1 shows us two ways, the way of obedience that ends in life, the way of disobedience that ends in death. Psalm 2 shows us how those principles um, come to life in history, in the rebellion of the kings of the earth against the Lord and against his anointed, who is, of course, his Messiah, his Christ, and how uh, the Messiah is victorious. 
And then in Psalm 3, we hear the voice of the psalmist himself, and we realize that it's nothing else than the voice of the Lord's anointed, the Lord's own servant. And he, in his own person, he prays uh, against the threatenings of the kings of the earth and exults in his vindication. So it's a kind of a key. This is, in a certain sense, what the whole Psalter is about. So let's begin. Blessed is the man that hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, and hath not sat in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law will he exercise himself day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the water side, that will bring forth his fruit in due season. His leaf also shall not wither, and look, whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not so with them, but they are like the chaff, which the wind scattereth away from the face of the earth. Therefore the ungodly shall not be able to stand in the judgment, neither the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Why do the heathen so furiously rage together? And why do the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth stand up, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that dwelleth in heaven shall laugh them to scorn. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then how shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will rehearse the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Desire of me, and I shall give thee of the nations for thine inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt bruise them with a rod of iron, and break them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye that are judges of the earth. Serve the Lord in fear, and rejoice unto him with reverence. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and so ye perish from the right way, if his wrath be kindled, yea, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise against me. Many one there be that say of my soul, There is no help for him and his God. But thou, O Lord, art my defender. Thou art my worship and the lifter up of my head. I did call upon the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept and rose up again. For the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid for ten thousands of the people that have set themselves against me round about. Up, Lord, and help me, O my God, for thou smitest all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy upon me, and hearken unto my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long ye blaspheme mine honor, and have such pleasure in vanity, and seek after falsehood. Know this also, that the Lord hath chosen to himself the man that is godly. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe, and sin not. Commune with your own heart, and in your chamber, and be still. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness, and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, yea, more than men have when their corn and wine and oil increase. I will lay me down in peace and take my rest, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Ponder my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. O hearken thou unto the voice of my calling, my King and my God. For unto thee will I make my prayer. My voice shalt thou hear but times, O Lord. Early in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. For thou art the God that hast no pleasure in wickedness, neither shall any evil dwell with thee. Such as are foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all them that work iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak lies. The Lord will abhor both the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me, in the multitude of thy mercy, I will come into thine house. And in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way plain before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward parts are very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them perish through their own imaginations. Cast them out in the multitude of their ungodliness, for they have rebelled against thee. And let all them that put their trust in thee rejoice. They shall ever be giving of thanks, because thou defendest them. They that love thy name shall be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt give thy blessing unto the righteous. And with thy favorable kindness wilt thou defend him as with a shield. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the third chapter of the first book of Moses called Genesis. In Septuagesima, the ninth Sunday before Easter, the third before Lent, we begin the reading of the books of Moses. We begin uh, with Genesis. We go all the way back to the very beginning. Um, to understand the relation of God and man and in the old creation and also to see foreshadowed our new creation in Christ in his death and resurrection. But today in chapter 3 we're looking at that episode known as the fall, man's disobedience in the garden and his expulsion from it. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, 
Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, which means living, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live for ever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword, which turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. Here endeth the first lesson. During this time, right up to Easter, we'll be reading the Benedicite uh, after the first lesson. And because it's rather long, we'll read it in one of two parts. And, and we read the first part yesterday, and so we'll read the second part, beginning on page 13 today. O let the earth bless the Lord. Yea, let it praise him and magnify him forever. O ye mountains and hills, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let Israel bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O let, O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Praise Him, and magnify Him forever. Amen. Today we resume uh, the reading of St. Matthew's Gospel, which we intermitted last week. We're at St. Matthew, uh, verse 29 of chapter 15. And we'll read through to uh, verse 12 of chapter 16. Um, and... Uh, uh, in this passage, uh, once again, Christ is manifested as the compassionate shepherd of the people of God, powerful uh, to provide for their needs. And, and yet we see this persistence of opposition. The Pharisees and Sadducees demand a sign, uh, further proof that he is uh, come from God. And he tells them there's no sign but the sign of Jonah, the sign that is of death and resurrection.
At that time, Jesus departed from thence and came into the Sea of Galilee, came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee, and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and had many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days, and have nothing to eat, and I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes, and gave thanks and brake them, and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. And they that did eat were four thousand men beside women and children. And he sent away the multitude and took ship and came unto the coasts of Magdala. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, testing, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which, when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Did you, do ye not understand, neither remember, the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Here endeth the first lesson. Well, uh, the gospel lesson, of course, a always heartening example of how obtuse and stupid and slow to understand and believe the disciples were. Uh, but I want to really focus on um, the passage from Genesis because it is, of course, so very, very important. And uh, what it deals with, in the first two chapters, we see the, the world uh, made by God um, in all its loveliness. It's all very good. Uh, and it is without any kind, there's no kind of resistance to God. There's no rebellion against God. There's no power of darkness or evil at work in the creation or uh, you know, in so evil, our experience of evil and all the various forms it comes, both physical and moral and spiritual, that evil is not there in the creation, and it's certainly not there in the Creator. It's not in us by nature, because man, like everything else, was made good. So it's in chapter three that we see where evil makes its way in, and it makes its way in through the freedom of the will. It is in the freedom of the will, uh, in this case that Adam, at Eve's prompting, chooses unreality over reality, chooses the lies and deceptions of the serpent, of Satan, over the truth of the word of God. And having uh, embraced unreality, he is lost in it. They are expelled from the garden. 
And all that is a kind of a metaphor for what is undoubtedly a historical truth, that the whole relationship of man to everything around him was thrown askew. His relationship to God, his relationship to woman, to neighbor, his relationship to nature, his relationship to himself. Everything, all the, the right relationships are broken down. There is separation, there is alienation. And the way back, it's not possible to get back. There's only a way forward. And uh, the, very, the, the very slight hint of hope that is given um, in this uh, uh, the disobedience and expulsion from the garden is in the words about the serpent and the seed of the woman. Thou shalt bruise his head and he shall bruise thy heel. Uh, thou shalt bruise his heel and thou shalt bruise his head. Looking back on that, um, the church fathers identified this as the first promise of the gospel, of uh, the victory of the Lord's anointed over the rebellion of the kings and peoples of the earth, of which we heard in Psalm number two. So let's give thanks and praise indeed for that victory uh, by of which we are heirs uh, and benefactors by faith in the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the confession of the one faith and the one Lord, let us commend ourselves and one another and those for whom we pray and the whole church of God to his watchful compassion and loving care. I bid your prayers especially for our country and its leaders, for peace, order, and good government, for the ch our churches and their faithfulness in witness and in worship, for all those who suffer in mind, body, or state, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions and for those who've departed this life in Christ and who do now rest in peace, that with them we may rise in glory. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, we beseech thee, favorably to hear the prayers of thy people, that we who are justly punished for our offenses may be mercifully delivered by thy goodness for the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us conclude as we do on page 19 with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. So many uh, rich passages read today, uh, and I just want to pick one out. We think uh, from Psalm 3, uh, rather from the Genesis 3, we think of our own willful perversity, the blind and stubborn ways in which we resist um, uh, the Word of God and refuse to um, believe it and choose our own way to our own harm. Uh, but uh, then we hear this good news that Jesus, uh, great multitudes came to Jesus, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. And Jesus called his disciples and said, I have compassion on the multitude. It is indeed to the compassion of Jesus uh, and his power to heal and save us of all our debilities, both of body but especially of our soul, so that we may be no longer blind but see, no, lame, no longer lame, but we will walk in the paths of his obedience uh, and all by his grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. On this gorgeous, chilly day, go and serve the Lord and be fulfilled with his blessing.